we have um uh this video is to celebrate um salty lassie's anniversary mm. yeah because uh two years ago salty lass came into our lives didn't you bev oh <laughs> i think somebody's uh stuffed a face with chocolate celebrating with you with some coffee uh, it'll be alcohol later <laughs> because um, we're celebrating two years of ownership of Salty Lass yes we are indeed um, it was two years ago that we picked her up in Troon and um, started this adventure that uh, you've all been invited to come along with and we thought we'd take this opportunity to have a little look back at what we've done, what we've achieved. Um, we've had a few questions from viewers who have asked us um, some things and we just thought we'd reflect on our last two years and, and what it really has done to us and what it means to us and share that with you. So I think this is going to be a bit of a crazy ramble. <laughs> That's nothing new on the salty last. Oh, it might be. This one, <laughs> this one has the feel that it's going to go a bit. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, as I say, two years ago, we bought Salty Lass. I'm getting mega excited. <laughs> I just sound I'm like so nervous, but um, uh, behind me, the uh, surveyor is actually on our boat. Well, hopefully on our boat. Um, going through the systems and just making sure that everything is all right. Oh. Hopefully it'll be fine and um, I will be a boat owner. Can't wait. So we had a, a budget and um, we bought Salty Lass for about 75% of our budget. Um, and since then, over the last two years, uh, we have actually spent the last of our 25% of our budget. We have. It's taken us a while to do it, longer than we thought it would, but... That's principally because we've been keeping our eye out for good deals, good bargains, things like that, getting our money's worth, and I think we have done. You know, we also didn't want. We also wanted to sail as well. Oh, very um, much. So, yes. We certainly didn't um, go in and sort of like do a mad, mad splurge, um, because uh, Salty Lass was in pretty good nick. Uh, we decided that we would sail a and really think about what upgrades we wanted to do um and we've done quite a few upgrades some of the upgrades like for instance the standing rigging according to our insurers is just classed as ongoing maintenance ongoing maintenance while other upgrades like our auto helm chart plotter and solar panels uh, have been a cluster's upgrade, haven't they, Bev? They have, and we've increased the valuation for the insurance as a result, and the insurers are quite happy with it, so that's good news all around. Hmm. Um, as I say, when we bought Salty Lass, our aim was to sail, and we have done some cracking sales, haven't we, Bev? We have. What do you think was your favourite? Oh, um, for my, it was the sail out of um, Liverpool. Um, not in last season, but the season before, um, over the Rock Channel. Oh, to Conway? Yes, that's the one. You really liked that sail, didn't you? That Bev? was a champion sail. a t-shirt sail you were out in your t-shirt you were just lo lovely weather lovely so it wasn't just enough wind to do it but I think the big thing about it was we spent six months in Liverpool with storms and winter weather and things like that and it was just getting out you know um, you get out and it's just 
It's the first really major sale of the season for us and we're off and we're out and it's a perfect day. I mean, how can it get better? <laughs> I think our, my other favourite sale um, of recent times, uh, for a completely different reason, was the one from Porth Klein to Hollyhead. Yeah, um, that was on a really... The only problem with that particular sale is... It wasn't as relaxed. <laughs> oh, there was no relaxing on it whatsoever. Absolutely um, none. Well, the ceiling. But I think Bev and I are a little bit tense. Purely because uh, we'd had issues with the electrics. Yep. Which turned out to be the most stupidest things. Because we'd had the um, use the windlass switch. Uh, we'd knocked the main breaker switch for the... Um, boat and it was partly closed and it was sort of like just on the cusp so that's why um the lights were going on and off that's why the lights were flickering and when we turned the engine off everything just shorted out boom that was it and that was it but we had the most cracking sail all the way from hollyhead across sorry all the way from Porth inclined across to hollyhead and it seems odd to get excited about a sail where you went in a completely straight line for 40 miles without turning left or right, but that's exactly what it was. We went in a perfectly straight line, we arrived on time, and that was in spite of the wind changing direction. So we did the first half close hold on port tack, then the wind moved and we did the second half close hold on starboard tack, but we held exactly the same heading on both tacks. Yeah, normally when you... When wind came round like 120 degrees, it was <laughs> absolutely... Mad. I thought of another favourite. Oh, yeah. The bioluminescence going across the Irish Sea. Oh, yes. That was actually uh, under motor um, because it was so still, the air, but the stars were fantastic. The bioluminescence was so strong. Um, we... The video camera really does not do it justice not in the slightest um we did actually get a little bit of the bioluminescence but it, what you see in real life it's a pale shadow isn't it no oh, absolutely absolutely it was uh, another time that we saw some absolutely what i class as um magical bioluminescence was um going from hollyhead uh, up to our glass uh, we had dolphins uh, say, <sighs> coming along with us. Oh, they were like tubes of light in the water, golden sparkles trailing out behind them. It just does <laughs> not... It, the camera just could not do that. Oh, we couldn't have video it yeah. because, um, you know, you might get one sparkle for all of the sparkles, but the fact that you could actually see the dolphins just coming along yeah. and, oh, it was just a brilliant magical moment it, wasn't it, it was Beth? superb so with moments like that how has all this changed you oh um well there was lots of things in a way that i wanted to achieve one of the things um that i was getting very worried about uh, in my previous life is my health one of the things i wanted <laughs> was to get fit and uh in sailing there's lots and lots of ways in which you get fit. Currently, the way to get fit is I'm on the hunt for gas. Um, I'm a chronic asthmatic. Um, I suffer from celiac disease. Um, and I'm basically, as a freelancer, I was just sort of like moving from the bed to a seat um in my ho own home and i wouldn't go out i didn't do anything and i was just getting more and more unhealthy um now i still freelance and i go from my bed to my couch <laughs> here sometimes you sometimes it's the same place <laughs> yeah sometimes it's the same place but because i'm having to walk to the shops uh, when we're sailing, I'm exercising, I'm doing stuff. Yeah. I'm getting outside a lot more. Mm. Uh, my health has just improved, doesn't it, Bev? And I'm just... Yeah. Whereas my health really was all up here. So, like, I'm I'm, a, I'm an IT burnout, you know. So um, I was losing the marbles. They were, they were rubbing together and chips were coming off. Um, so I needed to get away from that. Um, did you ever have any doubts about doing this? 
quite a lot because in a way it's a complete leap of faith you're going off and you've got no way of earning income apart from what I do freelancing yeah um you know so it's a complete leap of faith that you're gonna do this crazy life mm. but equally um it, it coming down to sort of like um something i'd read just before we actually made this um decision and uh, it was to do with um this lady who was in parative care and um she did a survey of what do people regret and it was basically they 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 have had so many regrets of what they didn't do wasn't it Bev? it was oh, like yes, the, um the five top regrets of the dying uh, yeah and nobody ever said i wish i'd spent more time at the office <laughs> yeah so you have this crazy idea and you know we both knew that we would regret not doing it yeah we might wind up living on a cardboard box under a bridge but we're gonna have a wheel of a time before that happens and we'll have all the memories of it oddly enough i never had any doubts about doing this um i just well you knew what you were doing was not it was not going to be good for you wasn't it oh what i was doing was doing my head in absolutely i mean literally doing my head in um but no i mean it's not so much doubts. I've had moments like when we were going around Chicken Rock where I thought, what in the name of hell? <laughs> <laughs> the name of hell am I doing here? I must be on my trolley. So much for force four to five, occasionally six. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm filming it. And um, I was I was saying to you, Bev, do you want me to turn out and take over from and I, you? And I was thinking you can prize this wheel from my cool dead fingers there. <laughs> Not a chance. But it worked the other way around too. You had nights where like on our third trip or third whatever it was, certainly within our first week of owning Salty Lass, we were outside the Isle of Man at one o'clock in the morning and I had hypothermia. Hmm. So you, well, or I was starting to get it. I mean, I was fully wrapped up with about five layers and a hot water bottle stuffed down the front of my salad bits. So but you were getting cold and I knew it. So I just... Didn't thought... stop you handing me the wheel though, did it, to get us into flipping... Um... No, that's why... <laughs> I basically, basically just said to Beverly, look, girl, you're going downstairs. I'll take this shift for the next two hours, as long as yeah. you're all right. I'll get us to the entrance of this harbour you've never been to before, and you can pilot us in through it to the outer harbour, the, the boys in the swing bridge. Yeah. Try not to shiver too much. <laughs> I think the biggest change we've made to Salty Last really is we've converted her from a day cruiser, a day sailor, into a cruising boat. So the things that weren't important to the previous owners, like autopilots, because they, they go out for a day sail, so they'd be out for two, three hours and back in again. It's no big deal. But we're going as cruises where, you know, we're frequently out overnight. So ha having an autopilot is a big thing. Having a, a radio at the helm, because it, it's a big deal. And that that's all worked out for us. So Yeah, also having, because um, we had um, a chart plotter and we do actually use um, the old chart plotter as um, for our anchor alarm mm. but um, you had to uh, step over it yeah uh, it went the slot in the door didn't it, it yeah. went on a slot in the door and you had to step over it so it was in a very awkward position whereas now we have um, all that information up at the helm which is where we want it really we do indeed and I think the other thing that's changed over two years is our level of competence has improved simply because we've been sailing the boat. I mean, how can it not? You sail the boat, you get better at it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, like, for instance, when we came out of um, Port Patrick in our damsels in oh, distress Lord. video, <laughs> uh, we clearly had not got the tide right because we um, were out for three hours and we did seven nautical miles. We made the decision to turn round and we did the same distance in 40 minutes. Come so back. Never never mind the tides. I mean, Port Patrick was our first experience of tying up to a harbour wall. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that confused the living daylights out of us. We hadn't a clue what we were doing, whereas now we're quite happy with harbour walls. They don't bother us in the slightest because we've got the technique. And we got that technique by watching other people come in and tie up to harbour walls. It's... And it's basically um, get onto that ladder as quick as you can. can. And then, okay, fair enough, you're going to take that rope off or that line off um, later. But you're in, you're safe, 
And then you can mess about with all the other lines. I'm sure it's not in the Upmaster syllabus or anything like that, but our, our, our philosophy has become... Get her tied up as quick as you can. You can tidy the lines later when it's safe to do so, but just get her tied up quick. I think also, like, um, we've become uh, more competent, sort of, like, knowing what other people, what we're going to be doing. Like, um, on one particular passage, uh, we came in and we just sort of, like, had a standing round. Oh, we're just screaming around the pot. I was in Liverpool. Um, it all went horrible. It went, all went so well until the last 50 feet. And then we made a complete another pig's ear of getting it into the berth. Mm. <laughs> and the reason was we'd been on the go for about 30 hours and we were just absolutely worn out. So we wind up standing on the finger pond to nose to nose, screaming in each other's faces. And the guy from like two, two three slips down sort of looking at us going, what in the name of net are these two up about? But we realised the real problem was not the fact that we made a mess of birthing it. It's the fact that we were tired and worn out. Now we've got to the point where if it goes wrong, we just sort of shrug and say, well, it is what it is and put it right. And we, we don't get wound up as much as we used to. So that's good. I think we just panic less now. Mm. Yeah. But also having that level of confidence uh, to know what you're doing. Um, and and certain, yeah, but a certain amount of fatalism. You've got to, you've got to just be prepared for the fact it is going to go wrong. Do you think we take less risks than we used to? Well, I think it's because one of the things is like we under, not necessarily understand the weather. We're still learning about the weather. Oh, the weather. Um, but um, you know, we're we're more cautious about the weather. Whereas before we might go out in a, a four or five, uh, so that if we get into difficulties or anything like that, which could easily happen, now we realise that a four or five could quite easily turn into a six, six or, or seven. seven. Even with the marine forecasts, um, if they say on the marine forecast, like Gainer said, force four to five, chances are the gusts are going to be four six to seven you mm. know just just the way it is add one to two you probably won't go that far wrong um and certain areas always add more like for instance Beaumaris. if you're doing a general um situation mm. for Beaumaris, um it's got some real localized weather which we have been yep. in piece of land here piece of land here big wind tunnel up the middle so in that area, it's always going to be a lot worse. Headlands? Yeah, headlands around headlands. It's always going to be a lot worse around headlands. Always awful weather around headlands and dreadful sea states, typically. Yeah, because you've got um, two different types of tide competing for the same stretch of water. So, again, that's always going to increase your issues. Mm. Um in round those and these are things that we've just learned one of the other things we have been asked um is how did we first meet <laughs> that goes back a long way doesn't it it does uh, we actually met on our year out which was in 1984 yeah and um we were both students she was doing electrical engineering i was doing uh, my degree was uh, in electrical and electronic engineering i was doing a computing module as part of a physics and applied maths uh, degree that's basically what I went to uni to do physics and applied maths um it gradually became computing over time though didn't it yeah it does so you were the soft I was the software student you were the hardware student we were both the same age they put us together we did a, a whole load of little projects and stuff yeah. like that together and then we became pen pals oh yeah because <laughs> you stayed in England I came back over to Northern Ireland and we stayed in touch with these things called letters now if you're under about the age of 40 you might you might have heard of these letters and your mum and dad might have a few they can show you. You phoned me up once at two in the morning because you'd watched The Devil Rides Out and it scared the pants off me. <laughs> That's right. And for some ungodly reason, you phoned me at two in the morning. And I said, what's up? You said, I've just been watching this horror movie and it scared me. And I said, which one? You said, The Devil Rides Out. And I thought, oh, heck, the old thing. I put the phone down on her and went back to bed. <laughs> oh, and mine was a decent movie. It wasn't. Other well, question we've been asked is, um, what's our short term and long term plans? Um, well, obviously, we're having keeping an eye out on um, two things. Um, short term is the uh, good old virus. Mm. Um, 
because um, if places lock down, then we're not going to be able to go anywhere, really. Yeah. Um, so we're keeping an eye on that. We're planning to leave here in a couple of weeks, and we don't know whether we'll be allowed to leave here or not. We, we just don't know. Mm. So, um, but if we are, everything goes fine, then we want to go around Ireland. Um, we've done 1,900 nautical miles in Salty Lass. And um, to qualify for the Yachtmaster Coastal or Offshore? Offshore. Yeah, to qualify for the Yachtmaster Offshore, it's 2,500 nautical miles. It's 800 for the Coastal, which so we've qualified for Coastal. So we've done all the long passages that we need. We just need these extra 600 nautical miles. Our longer term plans were to head down to the Med and places like that, but you know, as well as the virus, we've got Brexit and um, we don't know how that's planning out. Um, this year will be all right because our plan was to go around Ireland um, and that's OK. But we've no idea what what how it's all going to play out. No, we don't. Neither, um, either the government doesn't know either because it's got this, this, this virus crisis to deal with. So it's very unlikely it's going to be doing anything with the Brexit thing. I don't see how it can do both. And mm. it's even worse on the continent from what I can gather. So... We've got no idea what's happening. The plan is Ireland this year and the Med probably the year after or maybe the year after that. We just don't know. But we want to go into the Med and have some time in nice warm weather. It would be lovely. Yeah, uh, I think we I think we could do with it. But I do know that this year we're not going to because we're hoping that we'll the, the Brexit thing will actually know what we're going to be able to do. Um, but once we know what we can do, then we'll plan accordingly. But at the moment, it's like, well, we don't know. And that's just not a Is it very... an unknown unknown? It's an unknown unknown. There are no unknowns and there are unknown knowns. Yeah. And we're in the non-known knowns. <laughs> Thank you, Donald Rumsfeld, for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's our plans over the next year or two. So I think that really sums up our last two years in Salty Lass. We've had a blast. Um, we, yep. hope, we hope the year to come is going to be just as good. I just want some better weather. <laughs> don't we all and um you know we hope that you're going to come along on the following year and enjoy the adventure with us and if we get the chance to meet up with you then drop us a line and we'll do our best so i think that wraps things up for this video then <laughs> so as they say on other channels you know like share and subscribe and leave your comments down, down below, below. <laughs> you're a natural climber no i'm not a natural climber Natural bloody shouter. You can hear the echo. Yeah, so it's a welcome to on the couch video from uh, Beverly and Gaynor. Yeah. Uh, where we recommend that you don't buy a couch. <laughs> Yeah, buy two, but... two bunks and a set of seals. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever watched cows when they come out of um, <laughs> okay, out no. the sheds in no, the springtime. No, no, no. <laughs> but it felt like that. We really were desperate to get out and get sailing where we been. Speak for yourself. I don't think we should leave a bit about cows <laughs> in the video with us two. <laughs> the compar oh. Comparisons will be made. Right. It goes wrong with this often, thank God. Um, but there are days when it still doesn't go 100%, but we, we, we get less worked up about it simply because we've had more practice at getting it wrong. And <laughs> yeah, we have lots of practice with getting it wrong. If we're passage making and we're sailing, you know, 100 miles a day sort of thing, then, you know, it's good. <laughs> every day is a potential cock up. Yeah. <laughs> night hours. I think it's supposed to be 24 night hours and we've got about 130 in the logbook, which is, in my opinion, is about 100 too many, but there you go. <laughs>